Hi, my name is Alex Hester and this is my area factory. Hmm. Looks like the storm has taken out the power to the factory. If I want the TVL, I'll have to fix the solar panels and connect the power. To the first solar panel is plain and easy for the player to see so they know what they're looking for. They can move this small box in order to jump up and grab it. The next one is at the far end of the shipping yard. The water looks disgusting. Huh. Wouldn't want to swim in that. The last solar panel in the shipping yard is behind these boxes which the player can either move and jump across or move entirely out of the way. By standing next to an empty pedestal and pressing E, the player can repair the solar panels. The last solar panel is on top of this crate, which the player will need to move a smaller box over in order to jump on top of. Once all the solar panels are in place, the input light will turn green, indicating there's power. When the connector is put in place, the door will open. The player will need to find two connectors in order to open the safe which contains the special connector and the blueprint to the TBL. The first connector can be found in the first office which can be used to open the second office which contains the last connector. Once the safe is open, the player can grab the blueprint and grab the special connector which is needed to open the warehouse and can't be opened by straight connectors. Once the door is open, the player will have to crawl under a fallen shipping crate to get inside the warehouse. Since the door is jammed, the player will have to use the gravinal crane in order to ride it into the refinery. The player can use this straight connector to power the button that powers the crane. By standing next to the button and pressing E, the player can send power to the crane. When the light turns on, that indicates that it is on, and the player can jump on and ride it in. Inside the refinery, the player must locate four metal ingots. One is on top of the steel beam along the wall. The next two can be reached by moving these steel beams and making a ramp to climb up. The last one is underneath the gravno crane button. 
behind these crates. By standing next to the furnace and pressing E, the player can place the four metal ingots inside. Now the player must borrow the connector from the lights in order to send power to the furnace. Come on, baby, light my fire. <coughs> the player will need the special connector from the corner of the room in order to send power to the gravnel crane that carries the metal up to the assembly line. By pressing the button, the metal is sent up. The player must now cross the warehouse to get to the stairs that lead up to the assembly line. Here there is an assortment of physics objects which the player can use any way they like to get across the pit. Entering the water causes damage over time, so the player can die, but they will respawn at the top of the hole. A section of the staircase is collapsed, so the player must use a steel beam in order to cross the unjumpable gap. The last two gaps in the stairs are jumpable, but if the player falls, they just have to start again. Inside the assembly line, there are three missing metal casts which the player needs to place on the conveyor belt to the assembly unit. The first one is behind some crates behind the assembly unit. The player can use this connector in order to send power to the assembly unit or they can borrow the connector from the lights. By standing next to the conveyor belt and pressing E, the player can place all the casts on. After activating the assembly unit, the TBL will come out the output. The player can use the TBL by pressing R, which attracts poisonous clouds to a sent out orb. The player will need this special connector in order to power the gravnel crane and leave the factory. Once the player presses E, they can see the light turn on in the gravnel crane, indicating that it's on giving them time to jump on. Hello, my name is Evan Schwartz, and you're entering my area, which is a warm light for all mankind. Your objective here is you've just picked up the TBL, which is the Tesla Ball Lightning device, and you're entering NetDAP, which is the National Experimental Department for Advanced Power, to find an experimental fuel cell that seems to have created these toxic clouds. Um, as you enter in, you open the gate, and uh, you'll get some witty dialogue uh, that explains what you're here to do. And before you can get the fuel cell, you have to uh, assess the working state of the generator because the fuel cell will not eject from the core until there is a backup power source, in this case the generator. So your first objective is to make it to the generator and determine whether it's broken, can be fixed, or whatever. 
After you assess the generator, you realize the generator is in good working order, and all you need is a, is a fuse that you can put into the circuit breaker. So this being a power company of sorts, your objective is to go inside and search for a fuse. Um, the entire facility is infected with uh, these clouds, and many of the bastions have been uh, looking for this fuel cell because, one, it's still on after the apocalypse, uh, so it may be valuable, and particularly if they can solve the fact that it's been creating these corrosive clouds, if they can fix that. So that's going to be the long-term goal is, one, is to get the fuel cell, and two, see if you can stop it from creating these clouds. Uh, as you can imagine, there are a number of scrappers who've been here before you trying to get this thing. So there's uh, a litany of traps and things uh, littered about, spark traps and acid traps, and of course the clouds themselves are obstacles. They're attracted to any energy output, so whenever you use your Gravnol or if you use the TBL device, uh, the clouds will be attracted to it. So to get in your way, you can use the TBL device to try to uh, get them out of your way. Other than that, your objective is to clear the debris and get yourself a fuse, which you just picked up in that second room, and then find the circuit breakers and see if you can get those repaired. And that's what this next room is, if you can get over the much larger pit of acid. And as you go in there, you'll find the circuit breakers, and you can put the fuse in. Once you get the fuse in, you then have to configure the console to fail over to the generator once the core is ejected. If it doesn't have a failover setting, it won't eject the core. And there are three consoles that have to be independently configured, so that's what you're doing here is configuring each one of these consoles to fail over to the generator uh, once you have issued the command to eject. So now that you've got your consoles all configured up, uh, you can head into the lab and issue the eject core command, which will eject the fuel cell from the core. So in the lab, you'll notice the lab main core reactor room is closed off, and your exit is open from the lab. You could go back if you needed to, but once you activate the eject core, it shuts off the lab, opens up the reactor room, and you can crouch to get in there and get the fuel cell. Uh, once you have the fuel cell, it radiates enough energy to attract the clouds to it. So then the clouds start chasing you, so to speak, or attracted to it. And you can't go out the way you came, so you have to find another way out. And luckily for you, on the far side of the lab, uh, reactor room that is, you can see a breach in the wall where you can try to escape. But you've got all of this debris in the way that you have to kind of navigate without being completely eat up by the clouds. Once you get there, you jump over these last sections, and you see that a pit has uh, been built, so you have to make a bridge to get across that. Uh, you climb up a rickety hill, and you need to make another bridge to basically get out of the back of the facility, in which case you move on to the next level. Hello, my name is James Boyer, and this is the beginning of my area. For the hallway here, we have to go around the boxes. We can use the gravnol to move these boxes here. Initially, the security door on the left is locked, so we'll need to find a way to unlock it, which means we need a box to put on the pressure plate there. This ammo crate should work fine for that. Now that we've unlocked the door, we can open the door by pressing E. Here we'll find trip wires that we can crawl under by pressing C or jump over by pressing spacebar. They do a significant amount of damage, so try to be careful with them. You can always heal yourself by pressing T if you have any med kits picked up. Here you'll need to jump over or crawl underneath the beams that have fallen and avoid the tripwire. Now we'll complete an objective and get you to the stairway, which leads into the control room. 
in the control room, we can see that there's a fan in the next room that needs to be turned off. So we can use the elevator to get up to the top. In the next room here, we can actually see the fan itself from the security or that was in the security cam view a minute ago. There's the combination to shut the fan off from the control panels. We'll need to avoid the clouds, of course. So to get back to the control room, we'll need to go through the ductwork to return because there's no way to get up on the elevated ramp. Now we can leave with because the fan's off. It is crucial that these pieces are combined with the fuel cell, or these clouds will take over the entire area. Oh no! The gas clouds are coming into the base. I have to get out of here now. And now this leads into the next area. I need to find that stuffed teddy bear from the nearby arcade. I think that's where the scientist said he hid the device. Hi, um, I'm Alex Sellaton. Uh, there's been quite a lot of progress made on this area. Uh, I think the two most clear and prominent things would be the new art and audio assets. Um, now, since the scrapper now actually talks about most of my gameplay setups, I'll let him do a bit more of the talking about that, and I'll talk about what's new. Looks like I need to use these two pillars to cross the river. Maybe if I keep using the spare one in front of me... Um, I've actually stripped away as much of the text dialogue as possible, and replaced it with voice work from our teammate Mitch. Uh, he's actually done a fantastic job recording all of the voice lines uh, for our level. Uh, and he's actually done a great job at giving the Scrapper a, a bit of a personality. He's a bit, let's say, spunky and I guess kind of a, a play on, on Scrapper would be he's kind of scrappy. Um, but he, he definitely has a lot, bit, a lot more of an attitude. Um, because of all of this, we, we've tried to use these voice lines to really help guide the player. This pillar's too tall for me to jump on from here. Uh, as, as you've heard, um, upon reaching a new setup, the scrapper will actually give the player a hint about what they should be doing. Uh, so when they arrived in this location, he said that he could, you know, place the spare pillar in front of the, the pillar they're currently standing on to kind of systematically swap them out and create a... A, a bit of a bridge. Not quite a bridge in that it's all connected, but you move it in front of yourself and keep going. Um, additionally, if the player messes up, the scrapper will actually give them advice about how to get back on track. So in this case, earlier whenever the, the player fell, you heard, um, oh, I, this is too tall for me to get on from here. Well, that's a hint to the player that if they can't get onto it from in the water, they have to go back to this position to jump onto the rock. Uh, now, unfortunately, the addition of the water has caused a bit of a, a drop in performance uh, for some areas, uh, specifically mine, because mine's very water heavy with it being a river. Um, so it kind of caused a bit of a delay for the, the jumping and the... Gravnel has a bit of an issue trying to, to work with uh, the performance drop as well. But we are working on fixing that for gold. I should pull this lever to let down the ladder. That may come in handy later on. Power's out in the arcade, too. 
I guess I can be an electrician again. Gotta restore the power to get the doors open. Now, as for the visuals, I've focused on three key elements. Uh, and I'll explain them here in just a moment. Better use the grab mill to carry this generator. I think I saw a fuse box on the side of the arcade. Maybe I can use these pillars to help me get it across the big ditch. So the, the three key elements that I've focused on for visuals are the, the nature the, in the surrounding areas, the urban areas, like what the player is in now, and the inside of the arcade. Um, I, I've tried to put a lot of effort into ensuring that all three areas meshed as seamlessly as possible. Um, it's set up to feel natural from going from the abandoned roads, through the trail, around and into all of the local buildings, and back again. Looks like I gotta win some tickets before I can get that bear. Um, the roads are set up to have broken down cars and really feel abandoned. The arcade is now set up to where it really gives off this feel of an old arcade. Uh, unfortunately, the, the duck game's textures didn't quite cross over in Perforce for some reason. But um, it's supposed to be set up to look like like a landscape. It's got a, a grass thing and, and wood and whatnot and the sun and clouds. Um, the darts will actually stick to the wall um, whenever you throw them. Sometimes they'll fall down and sometimes they'll actually stick if you miss the target. If you hit the target, it'll stick all the time. Um, unfortunately, there's a little bit of an issue with uh, Unity's hit detection with fast-moving objects. So it gave a little bit of a problem here when he was trying to knock down all the ducks. Uh, but the, the good thing about it is is that if you don't knock over all the ducks, or if you fail any of these mini games, you can actually put in another quarter and restart. Uh, I will be working on the uh, the hit detection for this part as well. Uh, hopefully I can get that fixed. It's been something that's been a little bit of an issue since I, I first built the level. Um, so hang on just a second. Whoa! Jackpot of teddy bears. Good to know in case I lose one. Now we, we might have to rework the script, but up. Oh. <laughs> but the um... gotta get this teddy bear back across the river. I need to find a way to get it there without getting it wet, though. I could use this yeah, third pillar of the river to get device. the bear across. We also need to. Or maybe I could use some of that precision throwing I learned in the arcade. We also need to set it up to where some of the audio doesn't play at the same time. Uh, but with regards to the. Um, the teddy bears, it's going to be set up to where if the player gets it wet, the device inside is ruined. So getting it wet will cause it to simply respawn at the arcade. That's why you can pull down the... Well, I can't carry the bear through the waterfall. Is there another way to get it out of this cave? That's why you can pull down the, uh, the ladder, is so that if you do mess up and get the bear wet, you can easily go back to the arcade and make your way through from there. And it treats it like the bears glitch out. There should be a workbench up ahead on the right where I can get the device out of this teddy bear. Time for some search. It makes it seem like the bears glitch out of the... I need to get the bear up to the workbench Sorry. on this ledge. Maybe that boulder in the ditch nearby can help. A pile of bears glitches out of the uh, the prize machine, so that if you did mess up, you can go back, and it gives a reason why the bear responds there. It's not necessarily like thematically, it's not the same bear. You're going back and grabbing a new one, but since there's a pile of bears there, it makes it seem as if you're you're going back and you know getting a brand new bear. Uh, and then right here, you you take this boulder that you previously used. 
you get up to a workbench so that you can get the device out of the bear. And after you've gotten the device from the bear, you can move on to the next section, with it, which is the church. All right. Turrets, huh? Too bad Hello, my name is Mitchell Lang, and proof. this is my area. That'd be too easy. Just another wisecrack from the scrapper. So as you can see, there's clouds all over the area here. Um, this is where the final half of the device is, so they are going to be naturally drawn to it. However, they cannot get through walls, so hopefully once we get inside here, we'll be at least safe from them. So we need to get over this wall, but every time we use the Gravnel, these guys want to come and grab us, so we're going to go ahead and use the TBL. Get them out of our way here. Create a little staircase. So that we can get up and over, like so. So now we want to take these bricks here, and it looks like there's a window there, so maybe we can break that down. Looks like we can. Looks like we can break it, so let's go ahead and break it all. And we're in, alright. Alright. I'm in. Now what? So now you'll notice that there is a piano over here. Some kind of musical lock. Better find the music sheet so I can play the right notes. Okay, so the scrapper is giving you a hint here that you need to find the music sheet. Once you have that, you can head on back over to the piano, play the correct tune. And head on down to the basement. Watch out for the broken stairs. Go ahead and jump down. Now here you have electrified water, so you need to use one of these crates. To go ahead and make yourself a little stepping stone in there and get across. Like so. And we're across. Here you'll hear another audio clip giving the player a hint as to what they need to do next. Oh man, a cave-in. Guess I'll have to find another way around. So we're just going to move these crates out of the way here. There's just a little pathway down there that you can see. So let's try and scoot this guy out of the way. Watch out for these landmines in here. Oh, that's what happens if you don't miss them. <sighs> okay, so we have two pads here. Looks like there's turrets out there, so let's go ahead and see what's down this way. Looks like I wasn't even in here until I turned the generator off. Now I just gotta find the generator. Okay, so we're looking for the generator here. Looks like there's a collector across the way there. Let's go grab that and see where that hallway leads. This colt 
that has occupied this church really doesn't want anyone stealing this device. So as you can tell, they've set up their automated turret defenses to keep anyone out. Okay, so we can't get in through that door back there. Let's go ahead and, oh look, we can probably break down this wall here. Let's go ahead and take this cross. See, there's a open panel. Maybe I could throw one of those wrenches in that box up there. Hopefully, it'll break something. Okay, so we need to take one of these wrenches, toss it into that box, and hopefully, it breaks something. Let's see what happens here. Toss that up, and it did. Broke the generators. Now, the electrical traps should be turned off. We'll head back out this way here. We can go the easy route this time, I think. Go on right around those turrets. Down the hallway. And if you listen... Okay, it's safe. However, this water is still electrified. So, we need to grab ourselves some crates. Try to get across here, okay. Looks like that didn't work. So let's move this a little closer. Oh, got hit by the turret. So we'll go here, okay. That box does not want to let me on there. Alright, we're over. We've got the Phoenix Orb. We can get across. We're gonna go up this ramp here. And we are out of the level. Thank you.